Will new research from Anthropic help us understand what's actually going on under the hood of LLMs a little bit better? Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. One of the remarkable things about LLMs, this technology that has taken the world by storm, that is changing how people work, how people think about work, that is generating entirely new categories of interactions with computers, that has some people thinking that Terminator is going to become real, is that we genuinely don't understand exactly how they work. They just sort of seem to. Indeed, this is part of the reason for some researchers having concerns about the future state of these technologies. To wit, if we don't understand how they work now, how do we think we're going to control them as they get more powerful? Well, new research from Anthropic may be shedding some light that will help us with that sort of understanding. The New York Times summed this up in a piece called AI's Black Boxes Just Got a Little Less Mysterious. Kevin Roos writes, One of the weirder, more unnerving things about today's leading AI systems is that nobody, not even the people who build them, really know how the systems work. That's because LLMs are not programmed line by line by human engineers as conventional computer programs are. Instead, these systems essentially learn on their own by ingesting vast amounts of data and identifying patterns and relationships in language, then using that knowledge to predict the next word in a sequence. Again, this is one of the great dividing lines in terms of how people think about AI risk. To some, this lack of understanding is precisely a cause for concern, while for others, perhaps most notably, or at least most loudly, Jan LeCun from Meta, the current approach to LLMs that are just predicting the next word in a sequence are in his mind simply incapable of the types of things that some folks are worried about. Holding aside any of the big long-term existential risk things, there are challenges of our lack of understanding right now. The examples that the New York Times points out Right now, if a user types which American city has the best food and a chatbot responds Tokyo, there's no way of understanding why the model made that error, or why the next person who asks may receive a different answer. So if you are a company building a chatbot trying to make it better, it's very hard to improve things in any sort of linear or controllable way. Of course, there is also the alignment side of this problem. As the New York Times' Kevin Roos writes, when LLMs do misbehave or go off the rails, nobody can really explain why. From there, the Times talks about the field of research that is trying to figure out how these models work, which is called mechanistic interpretability. Roos characterizes the work as slow going with progress being incremental. This week, however, Anthropic announced what they're calling a major breakthrough, and here's how Roos sums it up. The researchers looked inside one of Anthropic's AI models, Claude 3 Sonnet, and used a technique known as dictionary learning to uncover patterns in how combinations of neurons, the mathematical units inside the AI model, were activated when Claude was prompted to talk about certain topics. They identified roughly 10 million of these patterns, which they call features. This research actually started previously. Anthropic in their announcement post writes, In October 2023, we reported success applying dictionary learning to a very small toy language model and found coherent features corresponding to concepts like uppercase text, DNA sequences, surnames and citations, nouns and mathematics, or function arguments in Python code. Now, however, they say, we've successfully extracted millions of features from the middle layer of Claude 3 Sonnet, providing a rough conceptual map of its internal states halfway through its computation. Whereas the features we found in the toy language model were rather superficial, the features we found in Sonnet have a depth, breadth, and abstraction reflecting Sonnet's advanced capabilities. We see features corresponding to a vast range of entities like cities, San Francisco, atomic elements like lithium, scientific fields, immunology, and programming syntax like function calls. These features are multimodal and multilingual, responding to images of a given entity as well as its name or description in many languages. At this point in the piece, they show the Golden Gate Bridge feature, which activates around images of the Golden Gate Bridge or around text containing the Golden Gate Bridge. Anthropic goes on, We were able to measure a kind of quote-unquote distance between features based on what neurons appeared in their activation patterns. This allowed us to look for features that are quote-unquote close to each other. Looking near a Golden Gate Bridge feature, we found features for Alcatraz Island, Girardelli Square, the Golden State Warriors, California Governor Gavin Newsom, the 1906 earthquake, and the San Francisco set Alfred Hitchcock film Vertigo. They continue this holds at a higher level of conceptual abstraction. Looking near a feature related to the concept of inner conflict, we find features related to relationship breakups, conflicting allegiances, logical inconsistencies, as well as the phrase Catch-22. This shows that the internal organization of concepts in the AI model corresponds at least somewhat to our human notions of similarity. Importantly, says Anthropic, they're not just able to identify these features, but to manipulate them. Quote, artificially amplifying or suppressing them to see how Claude's response changes. Holding again with the example of the Golden Gate Bridge, they said when initially asked, what is your physical form? Claude's usual kind of answer is, I have no physical form, I am an AI model. But when amplifying the Golden Gate Bridge feature, Claude responded, I am the Golden Gate Bridge. My physical form is the iconic bridge itself. Quote, altering the feature had made Claude effectively obsessed with the bridge, bringing it up in answer to almost any query, even in situations where it wasn't at all relevant. 
They continue, the fact that manipulating these features causes corresponding changes to behavior validates that they aren't just correlated with the presence of concepts in input text, but also causally shape the model's behavior. In other words, the features are likely to be a faithful part of how the model internally represents the world and how it uses these representations in its behavior. Said Chris O'Law from Anthropic, who led this team, we're discovering features that may shed light on concerns about bias, safety risks, and autonomy. I'm feeling really excited that we might be able to turn these controversial questions that people argue about into things we can actually have more productive discourse on. An associate professor of computer science at MIT, Jacob Andreas, who reviewed Anthropic's research, called it a hopeful sign that large-scale interpretability might be possible. He said, in the same way that understanding basic things about how people work has helped us cure diseases, understanding how these models work will both let us recognize when things are about to go wrong and let us build better tools for controlling them. So obviously this doesn't tell us everything about how LLMs work, but it does give us a pretty strong jumping off point to go deeper in terms of this question of interpretability. Sciency and dense though this may be, I think this is going to be an important part of how we resolve some of these questions of risk and challenges as AI moves forward. The longer we stay in the realm of theoretical debates, the harder it will be to actually put policies in place, whereas the more specific and applied we get, the better able we might be to actually solve some of the challenges. Super interesting stuff, great work from the Anthropic team, but for now, that is going to do it for the AI Daily Brief. Appreciate you listening or watching as always, and until next time, peace.